All right, I need a boy, a young man, oh and a young lady I'm young. to help I'm young. for this game. I'm young. Your hands will get messy, so if you like, if you like chocolate pudding and you like to get messy, one girl. Oh, there's two girls that are raising hands. Cisco, Cisco's not a girl. Come on, Lydia. Ooh, so, so, Billy, I haven't seen you in a while. Come on, buddy. Come on. All right. Pull, roll up your sleeves if you got sleeves. Lydia's got sleeves. So, here's the object of the game. This word, perseverance. Every single letter of that word is in this chocolate pudding. You cannot use a spoon. Well, you can, kind of. You have to dig it out with your hands. And then you have to spell the word perseverance. The first one to do that wins. I don't know what you win. We'll find something. But, My shirt. Um, and you get bragging rights because girls are still dominating the boys in here. Come on, Billy. All right, perseverance. Ready? Mark is set. Go. Maybe a good strategy is just to find all the letters and then sort of it. You can absolutely lick it off. No, totally. He's haven't been used at all before. Go, Billy. Let's go. Let's go. Oh yeah, you have 45 seconds. You only got 45 seconds. Hurry! Right now. Jeez. Ugh. <laughs> Alright, let's go. 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 Let
Father promise you have yeah. heard me talk about it. So he's telling he's saying, wait. So Jesus rose from the dead. They're getting ready to go do this big thing. Jesus is going to give them this task to do. And he says, wait. Well, that's kind of weird, right? Well, what does he say to wait for? Wait for my gift to come to my father and my father. That gift. Y'all like gifts? 
When y'all get gifts? Presents? Christmas? Yeah. We love gifts, right? Birthday. Gifts, are, gifts are awesome. Gifts, gifts make, me, make me really happy. So what gift was he talking about here? Does anybody know? That's close. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. boy. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. So why, why do we need the Holy Spirit? Can we go to uh, Acts 1 and 8? All right, just read the beginning of that. Someone want to read the beginning? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Power. That word power. So not think of, when y'all think of God, y'all think of that word power? So, so what, what does that mean? What does it mean if you have power? Oh, like you have to get to draw somebody, or like you have like superpowers or something. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Because Jesus said he's going to give them power. And so this, the second sentence, someone read that second sentence for me. You got it? So Jesus has a task for them. This is what he's saying he wants them to do. He wants, he wants them to tell people about him. Where? Where did he say he wants to do it? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He's like, okay, I want y'all to tell everyone in Jerusalem about me. I want to tell them about my name. And so at first reading that, I think, oh, that's, that's not that bad. But Jerusalem is a pretty big place. It's the center of Israel. And Israel is a place where almost everything happens in the Bible. So this, when the disciples heard this, what do you think they were thinking? Kind of like, oh, wow. Um, to all of Israel? I mean, all, all of Jerusalem? I'm not sure if I can do that. Y'all know how many people lived in Jerusalem at the time? 50,000 people. Oh, that's amazing. So imagine, imagine Jerusalem is Atlanta. And so Jesus comes and he's like, I want y'all to want y'all to talk about me. I want y'all to tell all of Atlanta about me. It's a pretty big task, right? So I'm going to use this right here. This is an example. So this little bit right here, okay, that's 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 Jerusalem, okay? So he's like, I want y'all to just I want y'all to do this. I want y'all to tell people about Jerusalem. We'll go back to Acts 1 8. What's he say next? Ooh. Read that next little sentence. <laughs> Judea and Samaria. Alright, so if y'all know anything about Judea and Samaria, we probably have a picture of it. But it is so it's even bigger. So now Jesus is saying, okay, don't just go to Atlanta. Now he's saying, go to all of Georgia. Can y'all believe that? All of Georgia? That seems like a huge task. I mean, me getting mad about football football in the morning seems like pretty small compared to that, right? So we get a little bit bigger. And so they're like, okay, okay, we can do this. But he wasn't even done yet. We go back to to Acts 1-8. Don't want to read that last sentence? Parsi, you got it. From Alcorn? From one end of the earth to the other? That's like... It's like the whole thing. I can't even roll it out the whole way. Yes, you can. On the floor. That's, that's, the whole, that's the whole world. And so we need the whole world up here on the map. So we got the whole Roman Empire right there. That's, I, can't, I don't even know how many people are in there. So many people. So the disciples, they're probably like... Probably like, oh, I don't, this seems kind of hard, right? But they didn't quit. And what happened? How do y'all think that they got, how do y'all think that they did this? Oh, but then, and, oh, well, we just talked about that gift. Oh, the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. So later on in Acts 2, the Holy Spirit actually comes in their house and fills them up. It's actually amazing. They start, they start having all this power, they start speaking different languages. They started being able to speak in tongues. If y'all know what tongues is, that means that they can speak to people who, of all languages and everyone will be able to understand them. Isn't that amazing? That's crazy. Y'all know how many people were saved that day? The Holy Spirit? Oh, I mean, uh, 500. 500, that's a good guess. That, in that one day, 3,000 people in Jerusalem came to Christ. See, that impossible task, does that seem pretty impossible? Yes. It became possible because they trusted in God and God empowered them, empowered them to do it. And they, so in all of Jerusalem. And so that happened. 
so that, that's in Jerusalem, right? So 3,000 people in Jerusalem. Well, so they keep on going. It turns out this spreads all throughout Samaria and Judea. So it does the second part. And then there's more. Talking about Rome. Y'all see that little boot thing up there? So up at the top, a little bit of that is a place called Rome. And at this time, Rome is the most powerful place in the whole world. It's the biggest place. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's crazy. And guess what? They persecuted a lot of Christians. It means they killed a lot of Christians. And so, you know, I'm sure at the beginning they're like, we can't go to all, we can't go to all of Rome. We can't, we can't do this. Well, the book of Acts actually ends with a guy named Paul. Do y'all know who Paul is? Paul? So Paul wrote a bunch of the New Testament, right? He was a, he was a huge God's chosen person to spread his word to the Gentiles, to us, really. See how Acts ends? Acts actually ends, and Paul is about to meet with Caesar. If you don't know anything about history, Caesar at the time was the leader of Rome, making him the most powerful person in the whole world at this time. And he was about to meet with him, talk about Christianity, and talk about Jesus. So like I said, this impossible task seemed very possible. Not because the, 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 not because the disciples were these great, amazing people. I mean, they were, don't get on, they were, they, were, they were awesome. But it's God's power, it's God's Holy Spirit that empowered them to do so. So your, your task may not be the whole world. You may not have to spread the gospel. You may not have to, you know, sail across oceans and seas and, and tell people in, you know, Iraq or Rome about Jesus. That may not be, that may not be your task. But I want you to ask yourself, what, what is your task? What, what in your life right now makes you want to quit? And I, I don't know what that is. I mean, for me, I, it's, it's football. And there are some guys that I'm trying to disciple and lead, and it's very difficult and hard because it seems like there's no way that it can end good. It seems impossible. You know, it's funny. I read, I read this story about these, about these disciples, these apostles doing that, and that, I mean, that, their task was much more difficult than mine. But what did they do? They trusted in God. See, that's what that's the same. That's what we have to do. They wouldn't attack, they wouldn't accomplish their task because they were great. They accomplished it because God was great. And they put their faith in Him. They could have easily ran away. They could have easily quit, but they didn't. So God wants to do the exact same with you. And I don't know what is it for you. Is it talking with some dude at the lunch table in school that you know is, is really struggling, going through a lot? Maybe he's mad. Maybe he's a bully. And that seems like impossible. We, we feel like we cannot do that. Maybe God's calling us to do that. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's go to church on Wednesday night. We're just like, oh, I, I can't go. Like, I, got, I, just, I, admit, I know y'all, all y'all here on Sunday mornings for a long time, that was me. I couldn't get up on Sunday mornings. So that's impossible for me. And it, and it really wasn't. Why? Because we start tr trusting in God. So I want to think about that as we, we're, we're about to go into worship and then we're going to break into, uh, break into small groups. But what makes you want to quit? What is that, what is that impossible task that makes you, just want to, makes you just want to stop? And how can we trust God in those moments?